channel filming a video for you guys today it's so nice to be back filming I kind of forgot how to use my, set up my tripod I I haven't edited in so long so I have no idea if this is gonna be any good but we're gonna try because I've missed filming videos I missed communicating with you guys I spend a lot of time on my own at home and it's just really nice to communicate with everyone in this way and I want to share my thoughts and opinions on books as I read quite a lot. I haven't read as much this year, I've only read two books but I want to talk about them today as well as talk about my favourite books from 2023. So if that interests you stick around and I know you're probably wondering where have you been? Where have you been bitch? Where have you bloody been? I'm sorry, I have a chronic illness or chronic illnesses and also got diagnosed with something new, a physical illness, um, which has been uh, hard, difficult to say the least. But I'm on new medication, I'm in EMDR therapy for my PTSD symptom kind of thing going on, and I'm on a depot injection for my bipolar, which is helping loads. And I just feel more myself than I've ever felt, probably since before, Covid, I want to say, which is a long time ago now. Uh, I think it was 2020 when it was all the lockdowns and everything. And I, I think I filmed a few videos and I privated a lot of my older videos before that uh, as I didn't feel comfortable having my old self on the internet. Let's catch up, let's talk about books and just have a chill time. Grab hot drink or beverage of your choice and yeah, let's just hang out really. <laughs> The first book I finished this year was The Orange and Other Poems by Wendy Cope. I know what you're thinking, Erin, you're such a basic babe, but I, I know, but I really, really, really enjoy these poems. They're very easy, short, sweet, and not too complex. I feel like they're very accessible for a, a large group of people. And sometimes I don't like too flowery, too complex poetry. Sometimes you just want to read something and go, oh, that's nice, or that makes you feel something. And that's what it's all about, right? Uh, I'm not a poet. I do write some stuff, but I'm not, like, an expert. I'm not able to speak too critically about poetry, as I don't know what I'm talking about. I would like to learn more and maybe even do a course or something. Um, but yeah, I read The Orange and other poems and if you didn't know um, the poem The Orange where you're living under a rock really. Now I thought I would read The Orange as I feel like being a primary school teacher today <laughs> and reading you uh, my favourite poem uh, from this collection. So at lunchtime I bought a huge orange, the size of it made us all laugh. I peeled it and shared it with Robert and Dave, they got quarters and I had half. And that orange, it made me so happy, as ordinary things often do. Just lately, the shopping, a walk in the park, this is peace and contentment, it's new. The rest of the day was quite easy. I did all the jobs on my list and enjoyed them and had some time over. I love you, I'm glad I exist. And I just think that's really sweet about appreciating the small things, um, appreciating your friends, your food, your surroundings, and being content is something that a lot of us don't take for granted because we can't feel peace and contentment. I, I really relate to that. And I, yeah, I really enjoy Wendy Cope's work. I um, have read quite a lot of her stuff and this is the first book I bought. And isn't this cover gorgeous? I think one of the reasons I haven't been reading as much is I've been playing so many games, both on Switch and PC. I've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, I've been playing Cyberpunk, 
I've been playing Dave the Diver on Switch, uh, as well as Mario Wonder, the new Mario Bros. Wonder one. It's so good. And also, what else have I been playing? Stardew Valley with my partner. We've got a beach farm together. I just love games. So if you would like me to talk about games on this channel as well, I would definitely be keen to do that. But I wasn't sure because I've only talked about books before or like lifestyle, mental health and things. I didn't know if that was something people would be interested in. But I'm open to making that kind of content, maybe doing a let's play even, as I do actually own a capture card that I was gonna use and start streaming in lockdown. I had all these ideas in lockdown. I feel like everyone had, had this uh, thing where they were like trying to create new hobbies like baking or getting into crochet. And I personally always get into something and then never finish it. Uh, that's a character flaw for me. But anyways, I'll stop rambling and talk about the second book I re read this year. And that is Mad World, the Politics of Mental Health by Misha Fraser Carroll and I've I've tapped it and annotated it and it's matching the book which I think is quite cute and this is a radical non-fiction book all about the politics of mental health in the UK which is quite nice to have it be UK centric as that's where I live and I read a lot of books that are more US centric when it comes to mental health and disability justice and health so it's really nice to see kind of a more UK centric read and talk about issues and stuff that me and my community experience day to day and don't always get sh like shared or widely shared or talked about. Uh, there's a lot of mental health awareness um, which she does talk about in this book how the barriers that we experience from getting healthcare and uh, support are very much material and not and are very much are very much material and raising awareness isn't going to help uh <laughs> isn't going to help uh get you the treatment or help or support you need raising awareness isn't going to do anything when it's the systems in place uh like capitalism that stop us from getting the support and help we need I actually wrote a review of this one over on my Instagram and I don't usually write reviews I usually just post pretty pictures of books and things about my life and general stuff um, but I have started writing reviews and I was quite proud of the one I wrote for this so give that uh, a look if you fancy uh, I'm also on TikTok as well talking about books and stuff again I've kind of returned to social media more in the past few months than I have in a very long time and I think that's a good place to follow me especially as I probably won't be able to film another video for you guys for a little while as I'm actually having surgery <laughs> next week uh, I'm having my boobies reduced as I have really bad back and neck pain and I can't carry these massive boobs <laughs> uh, I, I can't do it anymore and I'm having surgery to get a reduction and I'm so excited I can't wait I've never really enjoyed having big boobs I know some people love it and that's cool but for me I can't wait to have small boobs so yeah that's what I'm doing next week and gonna be recovering from that for a while so there may not be uh, videos coming straight away so just enjoy this one maybe turn on notifications so you know when I am back but I really enjoyed this book because it kind of sh shone a light on the fact that mental health issues or mental illness I prefer to use or madness um, isn't something that is individual to us it is often because of larger uh, societal problems and structures that we suffer with mental illness uh, like capitalism and colonialism, racism, all sorts of things that go on. And I feel like everyone loves to talk about yourself and how you help yourself, self-care and in the well-being kind of space it's very much targeted like it's a you problem and it's a problem you have to solve alone when I fully believe in mutual aid and helping each other as a community and we should all be looking after each other. There's a lot of different chapters in this book that I enjoyed including uh, Disability Possibility which was like a really good introduction to crip theory and the social model of disability and disability justice. It referenced so many things that I'm interested in, uh, including a book that I read in, I want to say 2021, which was Care Work, 
Dreaming of Disability Justice, which you should definitely read if you haven't already. And also it talks a lot about diagnosis and whether diagnosis are helpful, the power and balance of who gives you a diagnosis and whether you get a say and self-diagnosis. And also I love the Art and Mad Liberation Tool chapter about how using art as a tool to dream of new possibilities and there was this whole thing about um, reimagining re what a hospital setting could be like so maybe have instead of a seclusion room it was a room where you could smash things up and it was all done by patients who have experienced the really sterile and horrible traumatic uh, mental institution hospitalization experience which I have experienced myself as a teenager I was in CAMS units and let me tell you honey it's 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 not it's not it's not the best uh bless the nhs uh needs more not just funding but also compassion from the staff and better training and can we get rid get rid of oxyvision if you didn't know about that um i'll leave a link to stop oxyvision uh down below and also i've just thought this book covered so many things that I was like nodding my head furiously. I don't know why it's called a radical book. I guess it these ideas and stuff are seen as a radical. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm just radical, guys. But I believe and agree with a lot of the things in this book. And I will leave some quotes that I enjoyed around. And yeah, I think everyone should read this, whether you suffer with a mental illness or not, or just have an interest and want to know more about. The politics around mental health um it was very up to date uh this only came out uh from pluto press i want to say last year um it was definitely one of the books that i heard was being written and i follow her on instagram and i kind of was looking forward to it and anticipating it and it didn't disappoint i gave it five stars um so yeah i really enjoy uh, non-fiction books if you didn't know that already on my story graph i think it says that that's the books that I usually read. I always come back to this quote that knowledge is power and I truly believe that. I learn so much about myself and my conditions and how I can help myself as well as other people uh, through reading books. Now for the next section of this video I thought I would share with you, I know it's late before anyone comments saying Erin it's February but I'm going to share my top books of 2023 and I have four books to show you. I know a bit of a random number, I should have done top five, but it's top four. And the first book in my top four is The Collected Schizophrenia. I feel like such an old school beauty YouTuber when I do this, like, you know, when they focus, focus. The Collected Schizophrenia is by Esme Weijun Wang. And this was a beautiful collection of essays. I almost teared up reading a few of them. Uh, I guess because I can relate again, uh, I have bipolar and I have had experience of psychosis. Uh, I still do, I hear voices if you didn't know. But I feel like this was dealt with a way that wasn't incredibly triggering for anyone who can relate. It was more inspiring and relatable in a comforting way. And the essays were beautifully written. Um, my favourite was the one about psychosis and connection with TV and film. Um, something that's very interesting about how uh, if you experience psychosis you'd know sometimes you think that there's messages coming th from films and TV and how overstimulating and a weird experience it can be immersing yourself in film and TV shows and how you have to be careful what you pick to watch. And when she talked about watching Hunger Games Catching Fire, which is a really good film by the way, uh, probably heard of it, it's the Hunger Games, the bit where Katniss is hearing those birds and they're the voices of her sister, Prim, uh, screaming and how Peter is trying to comfort Katniss and saying, you know, there's nothing going on, there's nothing going on, but she's in the section where she can hear these birds screaming the screams of her loved ones and that really resonated with me. Uh, when I watched that and it, I also resonated uh, with the author when they read it so yeah I really enjoyed that essay also the essay about life on the ward and um, 
it was very personal and brave to write something like this. I don't really like to rate uh, essays that are very personal, uh, like in a five star rating, because I just feel like this is someone's life that you're rating. And yeah, but it, top rated anyway. And the next two books uh, that were on my favorites were both memoirs. I don't know whether I'm just in my memoir kind of era and I'm really vibing with reading other people's life stories. Um, but the first one I read was What It Feels Like For A Girl by Paris Lees. And she is one of the first trans women to talk on Radio 1 and she was on Question Time and she's on Channel 4. And yeah, she's like one of the UK trans icons, I guess. And this is her memoir. Um, so it's a story based on some of her life events, but it's not really like uh, this happened when I was 10 kind of story. It's more, um, how would you say, fictionalized. And the story starts with 13 year old Byron who needs to get away uh, from Hucknall. So it's set in Nottingham, Nottinghamshire. Um, I'm not sure if Hucknall is a real place. Is it a real place? Um, but it's where Paris Lees is from. And 13 year old Byron needs to get away and doesn't care how. Sick of being beaten up by the lads for talking like a perf after school. Sick of dad, the weightlifting, womanizing gaz. And mam, who's pissed off to Turkey like Shirley Valentine. Sick of all the people in Hucknall who shuffle about Hucknall like the living dead, going on about kitchens they're too skint to do up and marriages they're too scared to leave. You get the gist. It is very fast paced, a lot is happening very quickly and it's written in the Nottinghamshire dialect which at first I was like okay I can't really imagine the voice and then <laughs> I started reading it in the voice of Charity Shop Sue who is from Nottingham and I kind of got it more into it don't ask check out Charity Shop Sue though if you haven't and yeah it was very gritty and I would definitely check the trigger warnings as it was very brutal and heart-wrenching in places and it's their journey and their story and yeah again I wouldn't really give this a rating as as such because it is a memoir but it's definitely uh up there as my top one of my top books and the next book that I read in 2023 that made it to my top four is a book that I feel like everyone and their mum read and that is I'm Glad My Mum Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This deserves all the hype. I'm sorry, it does. Um, it was so good to read something so honest and praise to Jeanette for being so open about her experiences with her mum. Uh, the mother-daughter relationship is explored in this in a way I haven't read before in fiction or non-fiction and also talks about her experience with uh, illnesses like OCD and eating disorders. So again, check the trigger warnings definitely with this one. Um, but I thought again, it was done in a way that wasn't triggering. It was more, this is how it is and how it can be. And it's okay, uh, you're not alone kind of vibe. Um, and also it talks a lot about childhood stardom as she was on iCarly, which it was a very popular uh, Nickelodeon show. And just what that's like to be a child in that setting and talks about Hollywood and whether children should even be in Hollywood and in TV and film in the way that it's going on today. Um, if you're interested in that topic, I would also recommend uh, Alison Stoner's podcast Dear Hollywood, I've been listening to that and that kind of gave me, gave me similar vibes to this book. And yeah, this one, what more can I say? It was funny again, but also sad in places and very emotional and felt like Jeanette really poured her heart into this one. And the audiobook I really recommend, I kind of read a bit and listened to a bit, but Jeanette does narrate this book. And yeah, I feel like everyone has been talking about this before and there's not much more I can add to the conversation, I feel. But it's really funny, I read this on holiday when I was visiting my parents in America and my mum was like, what are you reading? And I was like, oh, I'm glad my mum died. And she's like, 
she was very concerned that uh, I thought similar of her um, and we had a good conversation about it so yeah it was a really good conversation starter and I also like that this is cover is kind of like those old-fashioned self-help books that you'd see your parent or mum reading and yeah um five stars I ooh, I know I said I didn't rate memoirs but this is a five star read for me and the next book that I finished and loved and was in my top four is Transcendent Kingdom by Yak Yassi uh, who wrote Homegoing which I read I've also read and absolutely loved I feel like I have talked about this book on my uh, TBR that I'm video that I made as I was going to read it then and I ended up waiting and reading it last year instead and this was beautiful she write I will literally read anything this author writes hurry up and write another book because I loved Homegoing I loved this one and if you want a short summary it's about a girl Gifty and her family who uh, immigrated from Ghana to Alabama and it kind of explores not only what that's like to immigrate through her mother's experience um, but also it talks a lot about grief and addiction and it, she kind of turns uh, has a career in science and it talks a lot about science and her religion as well her Christianity or faith and I think it just explores so many topics in such a beautiful way written mwah, po almost it's almost reads like poetry in a way in some places I was like wanting to highlight but I was too scared to annotate at the time I don't know why I used to be scared of annotating my books and it's only in the literally the last few months that I've started annotating my books but again can we get can we get a moment for the cover beautiful now there is another book that I just want to give a special mention and it is The Missing Piece by Beth Susanna and Jordan Stevens and if you didn't know Beth Susanna is actually my sister and this is her amazing artwork she's an illustrator so talented i'll leave her links down below to her socials but her eye for color is insane uh i've always admired her work but i feel like she she peaked with this one and just to give you an idea this is my favorite spread in the picture book um and oh it makes me quite emotional uh flicking through this and the colours, like, come on, come on, look at this, it's insane, and I just think that for a children's picture book, uh, she didn't shy away um, with the kind of creativeness of it. I don't know, I'm not very good at talking about art, I'm not an artist, I wish I was, um, but it's called The Missing Piece, and it's uh, about a relationship between a grandma and granddaughter and Sunny is in love with jigsaws and basically finds out one day that there's a piece missing from her jigsaw and she goes on this journey to find the missing piece and through it she meets lots of different people and from different cultures and it's just it's a beautiful book and I'm so proud of you Beth if you're watching this uh, she was actually nominated uh, for a Waterstones Children's Book Award and was on the shortlist last year and this is the paperback that came out last year there's also a hardback version so if you have any children in your life and they deserve this book because it's beautiful and yeah that's all the books I wanted to talk about today to finish the video I asked on my Instagram if there was any questions you guys had for me and I kind of want to spread it out and answer a question at the end of each of my new videos um just a little way to end the video and interact with you guys so unreliable pages asks what books are you looking forward to returning to when you are older which i think is a really nice question i never really think about rereading books i aren't i'm not usually a rereader i don't know why if i love a book i kind of want it to stay as a book that I've loved I don't want to reread it and realize when I'm older that I don't like it anymore and then it's no longer a favorite and that just feels really sad and disappointing to me um but I would like to reread some of my poetry books when I'm older when I feel like I have more of a understanding of poetry maybe after I've done a course or written more myself and let wait one sec let me get a couple of my books from my poetry collection I'd like to reread Ariel by Sylvia Plath, which again, another beautiful cover. Uh, this is just a, a collection of her poems. And I would also like to reread Ocean Huang's 
uh, night sky with exit wounds as it was beautiful but I feel like I didn't fully appreciate or understand it all so yeah I would like to reread some poetry I feel like I'll have more of a intellectual knowledge that I don't have now uh not saying I'm dumb not calling myself dumb but when I'm white, older and wiser basically but yeah thank you so much if you made it through this whole video of me rambling on and if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more then make sure you subscribe and I will be back soon after my surgery and yeah bye